Hello, today I am going to show you how to make one of my favorite foods and that is vegetable blended soups or pureed soups you could say. They are just so easy. I like to make a big batch and just have it on hand for the week. I'll usually have it for lunch with a little side salad, maybe a piece of gluten-free toast or for dinner with a larger main course like you know, maybe roasted chicken with vegetables and then a side of soup. It's a great way to get different colors into your meals. I, you can make these blended soups from a variety of vegetables. You can make it from squash, broccoli, potato, asparagus, um, cauliflower. The list is pretty much endless. And um, like I said, they're super simple. So today I'm going to show you how to make two different ones. We're not gonna to get too hung up on recipes and quantity. I'm gonna show you just the simplest basic process and then I will link in the description to actual recipes. So we're gonna start with the, the squash soup and then I'm gonna show you the broccoli soup. So to begin, I've taken an acorn squash. Acorn squash works great for this. Um, Personally, I do wish I had a butternut squash or two acorn squashes just to make it worth my time, but this is what I have on hand, so this is what I'm gonna show you with, and it should work just fine. So I've got one acorn squash. I've washed the outside, I've pulled the stickers off because we're gonna roast it and we don't want it to burn in the oven. I've poked several holes with a knife into the squash itself, and I'm just gonna put it in a baking sheet with some parchment paper, as it does run out and get really sticky, can be challenging to clean. But that's it, I'm just gonna set this whole squash, which has been washed with holes poked in it, onto this baking sheet with parchment paper. And it's gonna go into the oven at 400 degrees. Now the cooking time is gonna vary depending on the size of the squash you're using. For this acorn squash, I expect it to be probably 30 to 40 minutes. And so even though I'm well seasoned in the kitchen, I'm going to set a timer because the easiest way to ruin a meal is to get distracted and forget and it burns. All right, so I've pulled my acorn squash out of the oven. You can see it's nice and toasty. I pierced it with a knife just to make sure that it was fully done and it is. Now, it's cooled off for about 10 minutes or so, but the inside of this is still probably gonna be quite warm, so we really need to be careful when we cut into this. But I'm gonna just cut it in half. Open it up, and lots of steam will be coming out. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and scoop the um, seeds out, and then I will scoop the flesh into the ninja. a little hairy but no big deal and it'll just mostly just come right off of the skin so I've successfully got the squash in there and now I'm just gonna blend it with some broth um, whatever you have on hand is fine if it's packaged broth no problem as long as you've checked the ingredients and trust everything that's in there should work just fine I have some homemade chicken stock that I've made, um, and I also have some leftover vegetable stock that I've made. So I'm just gonna use what I have on hand because that's easiest for me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take what I have here and put it into my pot and just see if the texture is right. So the texture is pretty good, nice and soupy. I want it a little bit thinner, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more broth in, so it'll probably be like three cups in total. Now, depending on the type of broth that you use, it may already be salty enough. It probably isn't though. So definitely don't be shy with the salt. We're gonna go ahead and add, I don't know, probably a teaspoon. Let's start with a teaspoon and see where it lands. Mm, 
Mm, perfect. This is delicious. Um, I don't really think it needs much more, but I am gonna add a little bit of pepper just to ground it a little bit. Just a quick sprinkle of pepper just to taste. Delicious. And I just wanted to mention quickly that if you didn't want to go through the whole rigmarole with the squash, because it is kind of a lot to bake it and cut it and peel it and seed it and all of the things, you could easily make this soup with frozen squash. You can buy frozen organic kabucha squash, and I'm sure there are other types of squash available. And you would just cook it until it's tender on the stove with as little water as possible. And the directions on the back of the bag I'm sure are adequate. Then you would strain off the water and then do just exactly what I did here. I would just add um, either coconut milk or some kind of broth, salt, pepper, and if you really wanted to get fancy you could add ginger, garlic powder, um, onion powder, different types of herbs. Just mix them in and um, yeah and you've got a whole new taste. So now I'm going to move on to the broccoli soup. The broccoli soup we're going to get a little fancier with, um, but still very, very simple recipe. And um, it takes a lot less time than the squash because we don't have to roast anything. So I'll just show you what I have here. I'm getting started with, I've got a pot, a large soup pot, and it's got five cups of water. It doesn't need to be precise, but five to six cups of water um, is good because we're going to need to boil some things. Next really simple. I've just got a 16 ounce package of broccoli florets. A lot of times frozen vegetables actually retain more of their nutrition because they've been picked at the height of freshness um, or ripeness I should say and then immediately frozen. Here on my cutting board I've got just five cloves of garlic peeled and then I chopped a yellow onion. This is a half of a yellow onion and once I got it half peeled, I just chopped it into four quarters. No need to do any more than that as it's all gonna get blended. So I'm just gonna put the broccoli, the onion, and the garlic all right into the pot. I'm gonna put them onto the stove top over medium high. I might reduce it to medium. Every stove is different, so you just have to play with the temperatures. But we're basically going to cook it for about five to seven minutes until the biggest piece of broccoli is tender when pierced with a fork. Okay, so I just pulled the broccoli, onion, and garlic off of the stove top. You can see it's very hot, it's steaming here. Um, I am going to use my Ninja to actually puree this soup. So to start, I'm going to use half a can of this coconut milk to make it nice and creamy. So I really love native forest organic coconut milk, simple, um, because the ingredients are organic coconut milk, organic coconut, and purified water. And that's it. There's no guar gum, none of the other funny stuff. So in order to keep this whole thing cool while in the food processor, I'm going to start with half a can of this coconut milk, being sure to get lots of that fat. And then I'll use the other half, um, maybe in this recipe, we'll see if I need any more, but um, if not, I'll just store it in the fridge and I'll use it for some other treat, uh, maybe in a curry or another soup or my coffee. And then here you can either strain all the water out and then add it, or you can scoop, which is my method today. Okay, now I should have mentioned really quickly, um, when I did cook the broccoli and the onion, the onion actually took longer than the broccoli to fully cook in the water. It was about seven minutes, but just wanted to um, adjust what I said earlier and just make sure they're both done before pulling them off. Make sure that the onion is tender and so is the broccoli. Now I want this broccoli soup to be really cheesy tasting, so I want a creamy, cheesy broccoli soup. So the creamy part is the coconut milk, I don't do dairy, at least I try to limit it. So instead what I use is this Lewis Labs Nutritional Yeast. Um, it's actually the best one on the market. I think it's the cleanest, it tastes the most like cheese, it's quite delicious. And so I'm just gonna do like 
two heaping tablespoons. This isn't like a super precise measurement. And then I'm gonna blend this up and then I will salt it to taste. That took not even 30 seconds, very quick. So let's see. I'm just gonna go back and pour this into the pot. Okay, so I've got the blended soup in there. At this point, it tastes really pretty bland. Um, I am going to season this. I'm going to salt it until it tastes good. Um, a lot of people don't realize how much salt to put into cooking. So that was one teaspoon. I'm gonna stir it up. Um, salt has gotten a really bad rap, but really it's more about the type of salt that you're using. So if you're using um, some kind of a, a table salt, then it's probably not the best choice. They have been highly processed and stripped of their nutritional content. Mediterranean sea salt sometimes. I use Celtic gray salt. Sometimes I use Himalayan salt. And at other times I use that real salt out of Utah. Um, and they're all just more whole healthy forms of salt. So I've got one teaspoon in here. I'm just gonna give it a little taste. One teaspoon was quite good, that did it. I also feel like it could use a little grounding flavor. So I'm just going to add in some black pepper, not too much, but I'm just sprinkling like a single quick layer. Give it a stir, give it a taste. Mmm, perfect. And that is the broccoli soup. Now, let's say you went through that whole process and you're tasting it and it tastes gritty and it wasn't actually, the broccoli and the onion weren't as cooked as you thought they were when you pulled them off the stove. That is not a big deal. All you really need to do is just take your pot with a pureed soup and put it on the stove top and just cook it on low or medium um, for a few minutes until it fully cooks through and then you've got the perfect soup. So I will go ahead and post links to both of these recipes in the comment field, or sorry, in the description for this video and you can just go over to my website for the full recipe but you can see how simple these are to make.